Hi everyone, welcome to this video. My name is Darren from Maths Guru, and the video is called The Derivative, which my professor at university used to say derivative, but I have a funny feeling that the uh, auto subtitle machine is going to actually have a crack it at that one. Um, this video is, as you can see behind me, part of the Mathematical Methods Units 1 and 2 course in Australia. But differentiation, calculus, massive in mathematics is going to be huge this year and huge next year as well. So please don't get tricked or don't minimize this. It, it, it is huge and if you understand this it'll be great. Thank you to uh, Cambridge for allowing me to use your work examples you guys rock and if you're following along in that particular series of textbook then chapter 16 is vitally important. Where can you watch it if you haven't? Mathsguru.com. All of the notes I'm about to write on behind me and everything you see the videos are all there for you to have a look. It's free to sign up. There are also VC VCAA exam questions, downloadable summary notes. Soon there is a Summary book coming as well, but enough of that. What are our learning objectives? Know how to find the tangent to a curve at a point. Understand what it means to differentiate using first principles. Know how to use your CAS to differentiate and know how to approximate the value of the derivative. This here is really important. Differentiate using first principles, which is pretty much what this video is all about. Now, when I say a recap of past learning, I've just said a moment ago, it heavily builds on chapter 16, all the foundational stuff about gradients of secants and all those type of things. If you don't know or haven't watched it, head over to mathsguru.com. It's there for you. Um, fingers crossed, it is a great, great foundation. The more you understand about why this is working, the better you are going to be as a mathematician. Sadly, regurgitating this isn't going to help. And weirdly, you probably want to watch my next two videos first and then come back to this one. I know that makes no sense, but sometimes a lot of people watch this stuff and go, uh, that is so confusing and sort of shut down. So there is a rule that makes life so, so much easier in the next two videos. But this is the foundations, shall we? Okay. Now, as I've said so many times in my videos, my math teacher in the United Kingdom, or in fact, I don't, we didn't have calculators that could do all of this for you. So what we had to do genuinely with pencil and rulers is we had to try and draw the best curve we possibly could. And, and then pretty much they gave us what was x squared. It was the one that we could draw pretty accurately. And then to try and find the gradient of a tangent at a point, and again, I'll come back to that in a moment, we literally had to keep drawing tangents to lines and hope hoping that they were accurate. But if you were like a half a degree off, you got the wrong answer. It was tragic. And then they told us, well, hold on a moment, there's a shortcut and life got all very exciting. But what I need you to realize is this diagram here is full of just about every trick we can play on you in methods. What is very important is to realize that we have a function of x is equal to x squared. That's my function y equals x squared if you want to. It tells us to find a y value. All I need is an x value and square it. Now, if we look at this here, number one trick, oh, we do it so often, is we basically give you a letter as an x value. And then a lot of people turn around and go, well, I don't know why that's a squared. Why is it a comma a squared? Well, again, whenever they give you an x value, you substitute it in here and you write what you've got there. So a goes into here, we square it, and that's my y value. So now we have a coordinate written in terms of a. Likewise, later on in methods three and four, they use this to trick you left, right, and center. Now the next thing we've got to look at is this thing here. What on earth is that a plus h business? Well, if this coordinate here is a, and I'm moving to coordinate q, adding on some sort of horizontal distance, and we'll call it h, then it would make sense that that there becomes a plus h. Yes, we could call it b, but that would be too easy. We're here to try and trick you. And so if we now know we've got a new x coordinate as a plus h, then how do I find my y value given that? Well, I substitute it in. So I put this in the place of the x, and then I write it in there. So we get a plus h all squared. Well, Okay, what do we do now? Well, we've got two coordinates, haven't we? So if we've got two coordinates, what do we do? Well, we can do y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So let's do that. Now, obviously, I'm going to run out of space over here, but I'll do my level best. So I'm now going to say that the gradient m of my secant between p and q, so let's do m of p, q is equal to y2, that's a plus h all squared minus a squared, all divided by, just again, to make sure that it's y2 minus y1, or y2 
minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You've been doing that for, since chapter 1 and probably in years 10 and 9 as well. So what have we got to? We've got a plus h minus a. Well, the first thing is I notice here is that plus a there and that minus a cancel. Does that make sense? Well, hopefully it does because we know that the change in our horizontal is actually h. And so when we're doing rise over run, our run is just h because we've gone from a to a plus h. That distance is just h. Okay, that's good. That makes sense. What do we do with the top bit? Well, let's multiply it out. And again, as I say, I'm going to run out of room. So let's do that here. So I'm going to have a squared plus 2ah plus h squared minus a squared all on h. Yes? Okay. Oh, some more things are going to cancel out. So I've got an a squared here and a minus a squared here. And again, later on, I'm going to tell you that these are the, the steps and the things you can check to make sure you're doing this correctly. So what do I have then? Well, I have that my gradient of my secant is given by 2ah plus h squared all on h. And again, those of you who are good at algebra can turn around and go, well, hold on a moment. I've got a h in every single term. So that h and that h and one of those h's cancel. And in which case we have the gradient of my secant is 2a plus h. Now, probably the subtitles are going to cover that. Don't worry about it. I'll probably delete the subtitles for now just so that it is clear. But this is the process you're going to follow over and over again. We are going to give you a coordinate. You are going to move a small distance or a distance, let's call it h, a horizontal distance to get another coordinate. And then you are going to do nothing more than rise over run. You're going to multiply out this top bit. You're going to do some simplification and you're going to get something here in terms of h. And then we're going to go one step further. So here's an example, another example. Hopefully we've got enough room here to be able to work it through. If you want to, pause the video. See if you can get there first. But again, it is just the idea at this moment in time of trying to find the gradient of the tangent line to y equals x squared minus 2x at the point p. Now again, what is a tangent line? A tangent line is a line that will just touch at p. At the moment, we don't have any hard and fast rules to be able to do that, do we? Not really. But what we do know is that we can draw a secant through pq. And by doing that, we then get something pretty funky as well. Right, so let's have a look. So we've got, what is the gradient of PQ? is going to be given by Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Right, so what do we got? we got Y2. Now again, if you're not sure where that came from, just think to this. That is your X value. Everywhere you see an X, you're going to replace it with 3 plus H. And so we've got an X squared, which is the 3 plus H squared, minus 2 lots of X minus two lots of three plus h. Okay, cool. So am I going to have enough room to do this up here? Probably not, because it looks like it's going to be long. So let's start over here and see where we go. So we've got three plus, he says trying to write in, three plus h all squared minus two lots of three plus h. So that's y2 minus y1. Again, if you're not sure where it is, there's my y2, there's my y1. I'm now going to divide all of that by x2, which is 3 plus h, minus x1, 3. Okay, so first things first, very happy. They cancel out, leaving me the h on the bottom. I know there's going to be a h on the bottom because, absolutely, it's that distance we've moved. So the distance between p and q horizontally is h. Now we have to multiply all of this out with some sort of algebra. So what I'm going to have here, so 3 plus h squared is going to be 9 plus 6h plus h squared minus 6 minus h. And again, be careful, a minus and a plus is a minus. And then I'm going to have minus 3 all divided by h. Right, so let's see what happens. I've got a 9 minus 6 and minus 3, they cancel. And that first term should always cancel. And I'll explain a little bit more why a little bit later on, right? That's, that first term should always cancel. Right, what have we got now? Uh, two times for six, yep. Uh, two, 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 two. Oh, and again, I made a silly mistake there. Do you notice what I've done? Uh, I could argue that that was minus two times that would give me minus two h. Funnily enough, I did that deliberately in my lesson yesterday, um, and now I seem to have just copied it through. Right, so six h minus two h. So my gradient, pq, 
is going to give me 6H minus 2H. 6H minus 2H is going to be 4H uh, plus H squared, all divided by H. Okay, cool. Happy with that so far? Yep. Now, obviously, if your fractions are any good, we now know that we can cancel one of the H's on the bottom with one of the H's there and one of the H's there, which is going to give me the gradient of that PQ. So my gradient of PQ is going to be 4 plus H. Well, if you've understood chapter 16 pretty well, then you know that if I can make that secant shorter and shorter and shorter, if I can move Q closer and closer and closer to P, what is happening to my H value? It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And ultimately, we'd want that H value to be so small, it is practically zero, absolutely. So what we can suggest now then, is we would know the gradient of my tangent at P would probably be four, because by the time that distance between P and the point just beside it is so infinitesimally small, you'll be just touching at P, right? So we now know the gradient of the tangent at P would be equal to four. Now, obviously, if I move that point around here, it's only true when it's three, three, and it's only true for that function there. But again, have you noticed how the working is all the same? Find the gradient of the secant PQ, and hence find the derivative of X squared. Now, I'm gonna do a lot of examples because this is so critically important. You'll meet it now, and I can guarantee you will be in an exam. It'll be an end of semester exam, an end of year exam. It'll be in year 12, but we only teach it once. And strangely, a lot of people turn around and go, oh, I did not like that. What they don't like, I think, or what people don't like is the algebra. Okay, so here we go again. I've got a secant PQ, so I'm now going to say my gradient of my secant PQ is going to be Y2. Well, what's my Y2? It's this one here. Oop, minus y1. All right, so what have we got here? So my y2 is going to be x plus h all squared plus x plus h. Happy where that's come from? Okay, minus y2 minus x squared plus x divided by, uh, what do we got? x plus h minus x. Now, I do hope you are screaming at me at this point, because this is where people make a common mistake. In the previous example, I only had one term as an x value and one term as a y value. So substituting that three in here, easy peasy lemon squeezy. But there is a huge problem with the fact that this there is y2 minus y1, because there's your y2. I have to minus all of y1. And if I write it like this at the moment, I'm going to make horrible mistakes because I have to put that in brackets. If I don't put that in brackets, my next line is going to go horribly, horribly wrong. So here we go. What do we got? So multiply that out. x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus x plus h minus x squared minus x. Do you see what happened there? That minus x would have been a plus otherwise. And that's going to give me my value of h. So let's have a see whether there's anything to cancel. I've got an x squared and a minus x squared. And we need that to cancel because what you're going to find out in a moment, well, let's just do this here. We've got a plus x and a minus x. What you're going to find out is you need all the terms on the top to basically have a h in them. And the reason they all have to have a h in them is because that h there is going to cancel one of those h's. All right, so if ever you are left with an x term on the top or whatever letter that doesn't have a h in it, you've made a mistake. So that's a bit of a, an easy way to check. Right, so then we've got the gradient of PQ now becomes 2XH plus H squared plus H, all on H. What can I do? One of the H's cancels there, one of those goes, and that one goes there. Now, again, I always write a one there because a lot of people think, oh, well, the H is gone and it's, it's not there anymore, and it very much is there because that's the same as H divided by H. Right, so we've got a gradient of PQ is equal to, what have we got, 2X plus H plus one. Now, what do we notice? As the h value gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, what are we going to notice that value there is going to effectively become? Zero. So as my h value tends to zero, and we'll come back to that notation in a moment, we would know that my gradient of pq would be equal to 2x plus 1. 
Now you're going to turn around and say, but that isn't a number. That, that very confusing. And I'm like, yes, I know. Because what we've actually found is we have found, uh, sorry, I should actually say that's not the gradient at PQ. That's the tangent. Oops. All right, so that's the tangent at P. All right, so what we found out is that the equation for the tangent at P would actually be 2x plus 1. Now, as it turns out, that is true for every single x value as we go around this, this point here because we've been so generic as to call that x and x squared plus x. That point could be there, that point could be there, that point could be there, it could be there. And so we've now, interestingly, found a way to find the value of the gradient of the tangent at any point because all we need to now know is it's we've got an x value times it by 2 and add 1 and that's going to give me the gradient at that exact point on my graph. Hmm, interesting. Now expansion of brackets, I've got here a bit of a side note because normally when we teach this later on in the year we talk about Pascal's triangle and multiplying out brackets and all sorts of stuff because if I ended up with something like x plus h cubed the chances are I'd probably want to use Pascal's triangle 1, 1, 1, 2, 1 one, three, three, one, to know therefore that I'm ending up with the coefficients of one, three, three, one. That would be x to the zero. Uh, probably not. Let's just do this. x cubed, x squared, x to the power of one, x to the power of zero, h to the power of zero, h to the power of one, h to the power of two, h to the power of three. Put pluses in front of all of these and then effectively simplify it to give me one x cubed, or well, probably need the one, plus three x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed. Now again, if you haven't followed what I've done there with Pascal's triangle and multiplying all of this stuff out, there is a video on mathsguru.com. Now if you are still watching, can I ask a massive favour? Could you please head to uh, my YouTube channel and subscribe? Very few people watch maths videos, and when you subscribe, it just tells me that actually you've watched the video. I don't get any other feedback otherwise. Some people write comments uh, on YouTube, which is lovely, um, but uh, if I get three subscribers at the end of the day, I believe I'm going viral. Seriously, that's how sad and lonely I am. Anyway, so expansion of brackets becomes important. And then we get on to the last important thing here, limit notation. So what I want to do now is introduce something called lim h arrow zero. Now what I'm basically saying here is I want to consider what happens to an equation when this h value gets closer and closer and closer and closer to zero. So that's what lim h zero means. And in fact, for differentiation or what we're doing now, it's just talking about what happens if we make that that distance between two x values smaller and smaller and smaller. So you're about to see this now uh, in a moment with some sort of limit notation. Another example, Aisha Coco, consider the function f of x equals x cubed by first finding the gradient of the secant through 2, 8 and that one there. Where on earth does that come from again? Ah, <laughs> well they told me that y was equal to x cubed. So if I've got my coordinate value of 2, if my x value is 2, q bit I'm going to get 8. Thank you very much. That's my p value. My q value is going to be 2 plus h. Why is it 2 plus h? Oh, because we're adding on that, that, that distance to get to my next value. So in which case that would be 2 plus h cubed. And what have we got? Find the gradient of the tangent to the curve at the point 2, 8. All right, okay. So what I'm now going to do is let's move that over over above my head and let's see what we've got to do. So my gradient of PQ is going to be Y2, so 2 plus H cubed minus Y1, which in this situation is 8, divided by X2 minus X1. Well, happy with that. Thank you very much. That 2 and that 2 are cancelling, giving me my H on the bottom. Let's see what we've got on the top here. So we now know that's going to be Ooh, well, what is that going to be? Uh, so 1, 3, 3, 1. Those are my coefficients of Pascal's triangle. Uh, we've got 2 cubed, 2 squared, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 0. We've got h to the power of 0, h to the power of 1, h squared, h cubed. So if I now multiply all those together, I'm going to end up with x cubed. Ah, hold on. He said it's not an x, that's a 2, so that's going to be 8 plus 2 squared is 4, 
4 times 3 is 12, plus 12 H, plus 3 times 2 is 6, 6 H squared, plus H cubed. Now again, that side calculation here made my life so, so much easier. There is no way I'm doing 2 plus H times 2 plus H as a binomial expansion, and then doing that again, I'd be here all day. That Pascal's triangle makes things a lot, lot easier. So I'm now going to subtract 8, he says, going back to there. Let's draw a line. And I've got H on the bottom. Is there anything that's instantly screaming out to me that I've probably done the right thing? Yes, I've got an 8 here and a negative 8 here. Are all of the rest of my terms got a H in them? They have indeed. So that H there is going to cancel with that H there. And one of those there. And in fact, that's now going to become a squared. Rightio. So that gives me that my gradient there is going to give me with 12 plus 6H plus H squared. All right, now, here's the question then. What is going to happen as that value gets closer and closer to zero? So what happens as h tends to zero? Well, this term here is going to get to zero, and that term there is going to get to zero. So we reckon that the gradient at p is going to be 12. And I've done a very quick mental calculation using the shortcut from the next two videos to just check and absolutely the gradient is 12. Happy with that so far? For, so far? Yes. Now, uh, is, there a more f is there a more interesting set of examples? No, not yet. Here's example four. Right, let's just actually have a look at this now. Do you understand what it means by limit notation? 22x squared plus 20xh. What will that be as the limit of h gets closer and closer to zero? Well, anything with a h in it now is going to go to zero. And so actually, believe it or not, that's just going to end up as the value of 22x squared. Easy? You're laughing, aren't you? Have you subscribed to my YouTube channel yet? If you can, that would be massive. As I say, very few people watch this. And um, other than sitting at uh, home in a darkened room at 8 o'clock at night talking to myself, uh, well, I'm talking to you, obviously, um, it just seems a little bit weird. So if you could actually subscribe and tell your mates out there, if you found this video useful, tell people. It means the world to me when teachers sort of contact me and say, hey, by the way, my students are using your video. Can we use it for the school? Then I'm like, yeah, please. Right, what about this one here? Fractions, nobody likes fractions, but having just had a number of examples, that H there cancels that H there. One of those H's there. Right, so what have we got there? So let's just write it out now as lim. H tends to zero of, what have we got now? We've got three X squared plus two H. Ha <laughs> ha, we've still got a H term. That's gonna go to zero. So in which case we are gonna end up with an answer there of, 3x squared. We like it? We like it. Now, obviously, in this situation, we would not be making h closer and closer to zero on the bottom there, because then we'd get it closer and closer to infinity. So the trick there was realizing that you can actually split this up and sort of cancel some h's. What about the next one? Lim hates... Hold on. There's no h. That's okay, then. It doesn't matter what h does, because in that situation, that's just going to stay as 4. Bit of a trick question. Did it get, did it get, did it gotcha? Now, using the CAS is great uh, in this particular instance. Um, if you needed to, uh, if you're using the uh, TI Inspire, then what you would do is you go to Menu, Calculus, and Limit. Classpad users, I promise you, I'm going to do you an addendum at some point later on, and uh, just show you how to do all of this on your own CAS. I've got to learn myself. Um, but other than that, we should be fine. So again, putting that example in, it came up with 3x squared. Oh, that was lucky. I got 3x squared. Uh, now, the definition of the derivative. What is the derivative? The derivative is basically a way of finding an equation, if needs be, or the value of the gradient of a tangent at a point. All right, so again, I just want to make that clear. Here is a graph. All right, here is a point. If I can find the gradient at that point, life is really, really good. If I find the gradient at the point, right? I can't find the gradient at the point because I have to use a secant. And that secant gets closer and closer and closer and closer to this line here. A secant is a line. So what I have found is I found the gradient of the tangent. But that's okay. It's going to make life a lot, lot easier. So to be able to do this, we say, to be able to do this, we're now going to call the gradient of the tangent at a point is defined by f dashed of x. And that is going to be true of this here. Have we seen it before? Yes, loads in the work I've done on chapter 16, like massive amounts. But again, if we think about it, 
This point here could have a coordinate x, comma, f of x. This point here, just a little bit away, is going to be x plus h, f of x plus h. And if we do y2 minus y1, we get f of x plus h minus f of x. And if we do x plus h minus x, we get that h. So realistically speaking, this is just another way of saying rise over run, making sure that we take account of the fact that when we have this horizontal distance, it becomes zero. I feel like I'm over laboring this a little bit, but anyway, as I say here, yes, there is a much quicker way of doing it. Are you ever going to be doing this from this point forward? No, only in your exam. But if a question says show by first principles or differentiate from first principles, you have to do the process that I'm about to show you here. And every single line must be shown. And yes, it is tedious. I know it's tedious, but it is worth four, maybe five marks, three marks. I don't know, whatever your teacher gives. But if you miss lines or you skip lines or you just make it up, you're not going to get the marks. And that could be quite serious from, a, from an exam point of view for knocking off three marks. Right. So the first thing you do is we know that f dashed of x is equal to the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x or divided by h. So what I tend to do now is this. I say, what is my f of x? And I write it down. In this situation, it's x squared plus 2x. Right. So now that's my f of x. What is this f of x plus h? Well, where I see an x, I'm now going to put an x plus h. So f of x plus h. Where I see an x, I'm replacing it with x plus h. So I'm just going to replace that with x plus h is equal to x plus h squared plus two lots of x plus h. Believe it or not, that's the hard part done. Now I've got to do the algebra. Let's move this out of the way down here so that it doesn't impact my working out. So what I've got here now, I'm going to change to blue, I think. And you have to write this limit h tends to zero for every single line. So now I'm going to substitute that in. I'm going to write x plus h squared plus two lots of x plus h minus x squared plus 2x. See the problem? Absolutely. I was putting in more than one term. I have to put that in brackets. Otherwise, I'm going to get horrible answers. Now, again, I know that a lot of method students go, oh, I get lost halfway through, but it's okay because I'm just going to fudge it at the end. Don't fudge it. We look, particularly for these questions, to make sure that every line of working leads to the next line of working. If you make a mistake somewhere in a line of working, that's where you get stop getting marks. Okay? Just warning you. So, once again, lim, h tends to zero. Right, so we're going to multiply that out. What do we got? We've got x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 2x plus 2h minus x squared minus 2x. And again, where do you think that lots of people go wrong with this? Their algebra. You make one algebra mistake and the whole thing just crashes and burns. Right, what do I could do? Ah, have I got anything here? I've got an x squared minus an x squared. I'm a happy bunny. Oh, hold on a moment. I've got an x term. I've got two x terms, yes, but again, luckily they cancel out. I'm keeping in my mind the idea that the only thing I can have left on the top is terms with a h in it. They can have x's as well, but it's got to have a h in. So is that true here? Yep, that's got a h in it. That's got a h in it. And that's got a h in it. So we now end up with the limit as h tends to zero of 2xh plus h squared plus 2h or divided by h. I'm now going to say one of those h's cancels with that one there. One of those goes and that one goes there. And so I end up with f dash of x is the limit as h tends to zero of 2x plus h plus 2. So therefore, f dash of x is equal to 2x plus 2. How do I know that? Because that h basically gets closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to zero, and we're done. And because I know the shortcut, because I've already done the next exercise, I know that that is, in fact, correct. And again, I, I get it, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six lines for working, four or five minutes to do it. For three marks? Absolutely. For that, find f dash of x by first principles. Oh, dear me. Here we go again. And again, I know this video is long. I get people say to me all the time, if you just do some more worked examples, I get it by about the third or fourth one. Hopefully this is going to work. So what have we got? Right, let's, oh, I don't know what, stick with blue. I know that f of x 
is equal to 2 minus x cubed. So f of x plus h is going to be 2 minus x plus h all cubed. Oh, great. We've got that again. Anyway, it's okay. So what have we got now? We've got f dashed of x is equal to my limit as h tends to 0 of 2 minus x plus h cubed. What am I doing now? Oh, yeah. Minus uh, 2 minus x cubed. Is that right? Yes. All right. Because it's f of x. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Again, you're shouting at me, aren't you? Because you've got to make sure that we have that in brackets. Yep. Divided by h. So we're going to have equals the limit as h tends to 0 of 2 minus. What on earth is all that cubed? Well, I'm going to do a quick calculation. 1, 3, 3, 1. I've got x cubed, x squared, x. And then I've got h, h squared, and h cubed. You're probably wondering, where are all your other terms? Well, this would actually be h to the power of 0, which would be 1. This would be x to the power of 0, which would also be 1. So notice I'm putting this in brackets as well. I don't want to make an algebra mistake. So I've got 1 times x cubed, which is x cubed. I've got plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed minus 2 plus x cubed all divided by h. Again, do you see where people mess this up? It's the algebra. So we get 2 minus x cubed minus 3x squared h, minus 3xh squared, minus h cubed, minus 2, plus x cubed, all over h. Let's just check that we've done this correctly. I've got a 2 there and a minus 2 there. That's good. I've got a plus x cubed there and a minus x cubed there. Are all the rest of my terms in, uh, are all the rest of my things there in terms of h? Yes. So we are now going to get lim h tends to 0 of minus 3x squared on h minus 3x h squared minus h cubed all divided by uh, h. And so let's just see what now cancels out. I've got a h here cancel with a h here, 1h there and 1h there. And what do we notice? Well, we're now going to have, let's write it in that color, lim as h tends to 0 of minus 3x squared, minus 3xh, minus h squared. Well, anything with a h in it is basically going to become 0. And so we get our correct answer as f dashed of x is equal to minus 3x and squared. And again, I've done the quick check in my head, and I'm correct. Whew. Uh, again, can we use the CAS to differentiate from first principles? We can, but to be honest with you, this video is long enough and maybe I'll do an additional one for a bit later on. Yeah, if I were you, I'd probably just stick with doing it by hand. Now, this is the last part in the Cambridge book, and I thought this was very, very clever because what they're saying is, yes, we have just decided we can use this example here, and they're just trying to trick you now by having a coordinate given as terms of A. It doesn't matter what letter you use there. Uh, it could be an X, and then we'd have X plus H minus F of X. That's fine. What they're actually saying is it makes sense to average two values. Rather than just taking a h on the right, because we seem to always do that, that's the point we're interested in, and we always take a point to the right. Do a point to the right, so that distance there is h, but also do a point to the left. So this value of r is a minus h. This value of q is a plus h. Now, apparently, if we do that, we work the algebra through, then what we get is a formula that says our f dashed of a is given by f of a plus h, f of minus, uh, sorry, minus f of a minus h divided by 2h. Again, all you're going to do is in substitute into your equation uh, x plus h, substitute into your equation x minus h, same type of algebra, take them away, but this time divide them by 2h, and apparently you will get a better approximation. Now, I haven't yet seen a question like that on an exam, not to say that there won't be, but you never know. Let's objectively learn revisited. By the end of the lesson, 
Have we, do we know how to find the tangent to a curve at a point? Yes. All right, at least we know how to find the equation of, and if we're lucky, we can find actual values. Understand what it means to differentiate using first principles. Yes, that's the limb, 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 limb. Know how to use your CAS to differentiate. Again, this video, as I'm looking at now, is already nearly 40 minutes long. I can probably do a separate one on that uh, later on. And know how to approximate the value of the derivative. Yes, that's taking a H on one side and a H on the other. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this has helped. Now, again, if you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, that's massive. A huge thanks if you can and tell your teachers and tell your mates. But when you do this, realize it is probably just one question in an exam. It's worth a number of marks, but you're not going to be doing this process for every single time you want to try and find the equation of the gradient or the gradient of the tangent at a point. There's a shortcut in the next video, and I look forward to seeing you in that one. Thanks for watching. Take care, and please stay safe. Bye-bye.